All right, let's talk now about fetal decelerations. And these are important, so we're actually going to take quite a bit of time to talk about decels, um, what they mean, what causes them, what's the physiology behind them, because uh, fetal decels can really tell us a lot about what's going on with baby, how baby's doing, and what action we need to take. There are, um, first we'll say fetal decels, before we talk about the types, let's, let's just give some general rules about decels. They are described... Um, relative to contractions. Okay, fetal D cells are re described relative to contractions. If they match contractions um, on a with some regularity, and you know these terms honestly aren't used a whole lot, but if they matched if they match the contractions with some regularity, they're called periodic. And if they don't, they're called episodic. Okay. So periodic and episodic contractions. I'm sorry, periodic and episodic D cells. Again, just like accelerations, D cells, um, prolonged D cells last longer than two minutes, and they last less than 10 minutes. If they last more than 10 minutes, what's it called? It's called a change in baseline. So more than two minutes to less than ten minutes is a prolonged D cell, All right? So let's talk about the different types of D cells now. The different types of D cells. All right, my hand writing is going to get worse and worse as we move on. So pardon me for that. So the first type is early D cells. Uh, early D cells are caused by head compression. And, you know, early D cells are common, actually common, between um, 4 and 7 centimeters. Um, and so that they, it is, there's some data that shows, um, some actual testing that was done, uh, that, that shows the compression on the fetal head between four and seven centimeters. So you can imagine, you know, it's like a donut hole pushing on the top of the baby's head near the the uh, anterior fontanelle um, causes a change in fetal head compression. causes fetal head compression. Um, and let's go ahead and talk about the physiology for that since we're talking about early D cells. So this fetal head compression, so we get a contraction from mom. That contraction causes fetal head compression, increases the intracranial pressure. That um, that increase in uh, ICP um, decreases cerebral blood flow, and that then causes a vagal stimulation. Right? That makes sense. And then that vagal stimulation causes a decrease in the fetal heart rate. Right. So let's try to take this little bit of space we have over here and just draw out. So mom's contractions look like this. And remember with early D cells they're going to drop down and match mom's contractions, right? So as mom's contraction starts, the fetal heart rate decreases. And I think you can use this now and look and see what we mean when we talk about a contraction starts. So the contraction starts here. Let me change colors. I don't really like that blue. So contraction starts here, right? And immediately there's a change in intracranial pressure and that decreases cerebral blood flow immediately. And we know that vagal stimulation and nervous responses are fast. So that's why we see this matching sort of a one-to-one -one as mom's contraction increases, the vagal stimulation increases more and more and more, the fetal heart rate decreases more and more and more. As the contraction gets less and less, the vagal stimulation decreases, and so the fetal heart rate starts to climb. So this is why you have that one-to-one -one matching. It's a, a nervous response um, caused by this vagal stimulation. All right. So that's the physiology be behind um, early D cells. 
and it is caused by head compression. All right. So let's look at then uh, the next type of D cells we're going to talk about are